after Thomas Young's double slit interference experiment showed convincing evidence to support Huygens' light wave theory. Experiments on diffraction further advanced light wave theory. Now let's look at a single slit diffraction experiment. Here we have a single slit, and this time we're using the D not as the distance between two slits, but the width of a one single slit itself. The L is the distance to the screen, and the Y is still the distance on the screen between the location we're interested in and the, the center of the screen. And this angle here, again, is theta. This time, when a wave from comes in, every single point on the wave front will be a new wave source. So we would have lots and lots of new wave sources over here, actually infinite number of new wave sources over here. And every single wave source uh, would uh, give us uh, a new wavelet that's coming out. And all these wavelets will interfere to give us the interference pattern on the screen. Because uh, we have so many waves interfering with each other, the best way for us to s figure out what happens on the screen is to look at the destructive interference. So what we can do is uh, we can divide all these new wave sources on the wave front to two groups, half up there and half of them down here. And we can pair up these uh, point wave sources. This one paired with that one, and then the next one with the next one here, and then this with this, and then keep going. And then so, let's say we are looking at uh, this wave source and uh, that one, this pair. The distance between this pair would be half d. Now what happens is, uh, if these two wave sources provide wavelets that give us a destructive interference, then the next pair will also give us destructive interference. The next pair, same thing. That means that on the screen, we would get a dark fringe. So let's see. The path difference between these two would equal to the half d times the sine theta. Because, uh, because this pair will be exactly the same as uh, the double slits. And the path difference in the double slits case is d times sine theta. Because the distance between the two wavelets source will be d. But these two, they are distance half d apart. That's why the path difference is half d times sine theta. For destructive interference, the path difference is half d sine theta should equal to half the wavelength. So the peaks can meet with troughs to give us a destructive interference. For the next dark fringe, we would have to divide all these point wave sources into four groups, one, two, three, four. And if these two give us a destructive interference. That means uh, these two will also give us destructive interference. That means uh, all of these waypoints, they are going to give us uh, destructive interference. So we will get a dark fringe on the screen. In that case, uh, we would be looking at these two wave sources, and the distance between these two wave sources will be one-fourth d. So the next dark fringe happens when one-fourth d sine theta, the path difference, uh, equals to half lambda. And then for the next one, we would have to divide all these point sources into six groups. So we can pair the point sources up again to get destructive interference. And if we divide everything into six groups, the distance between each pair of the point source would be d over 6. So be d over 6 sine theta equals to half the wavelength. So if we keep going like this, we will get d sine theta equals to, if I multiply by 2 on both sides, I get 1 lambda. If I multiply by 4 on both sides, I get 2 lambdas. If I multiply by 6 on both sides, I get 3 lambdas. That means uh, for destructive interference, d sine theta would equal to m lambda, where m would equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth, which is kind of the same as uh, 
the double slit interference except for for the double slit interference when m is a whole number we get a constructive interference of bright fringe but for single slit diffraction the m equals to one two three not zero will give us uh, dark fringes and the uh, not m equals to zero the m equals to zero will be a bright one not a dark one if I draw the pattern on the screen, it will look like this. The red spots I drew here are bright fringes. The center is m equals to 0, which is a bright fringe. And then m equals to 1, 2, 3, they are dark fringes. Since the distance between each m is about equal, that means the central maximum is twice as wide as the rest of the bright fringes. Not only is the central maximum twice as wide, the central maximum is also much brighter than the other bright fringes. In fact, the brightness would go down rapidly as we go farther and farther away from the center of the screen. Just in case, if you're wondering why we call this phenomenon diffraction instead of interference, I can only say that people usually call the double slit interference, but the single slit one diffraction. And I want to quote what Richard Feynman said about these two terms. No one has ever been able to define the difference between interference and diffraction satisfactorily. It is just a question of usage, and there is no specific important physical difference between them.